I am building this Gilbert Cell HF mixer made by KitsonParts.com. This particular one uses an NE602 which is pre-mounted to the board. Now I bought this kit some time ago and since then they have upgraded the kit to use the SA612 which is actually an improved version of the 602. They're basically the same chip. They're basically a Gilbert cell. So uh, the first thing that's a little unique about this are the coils. So let me talk about those a little bit. There are three coils. The first is T1, which is a, uh, a coupling or input transformer with a center tapped secondary. The second one is a coil, uh, you might even, it's an inductor that's intended to lower the frequency of this 12.096 uh, megahertz crystal. And the final coil is once again a transformer for the output with this time an untapped uh, primary and a secondary. So uh, let's take a look at the construction of those coils. Here are the three coils. The uh, one in the lower left with the center tapped primary. This is one side of the primary, or I'm sorry, of the secondary, and this is the other side of the secondary, and this is the center tap. Six turns on each side. And then the primary is two turns. The second, uh, the output transformer consists of a winding, which you see here in the red wire for the primary, and then a winding for the secondary of the green wires. Uh, finally, this uh, choke or, or inductor intended to uh, lower the resonant frequency, you'll see that the way this works is the uh, windings go down through one side, are looped around on the top, and then go come back through the other side so that the, the two wires start here, go down, come back, and go around and around. There's 14 turns on here. Now, the reason that I've gone ahead and wired these ahead of time, rather than uh, after I've assembled the board, is I want to test them to make sure that their properties are roughly what they need to be. Uh, if you need more instruction on winding toroids, I suggest Alan W2AEW's website. Uh, or YouTube videos. He has done a lot better job of showing how to do that than I could do. And he has shown a number of videos on winding these various kinds of coils and using them in RF circuits. So with that aside, let's move on to assembling the board. I have installed the uh, the toroids, the inductors on the board and I thought I might show you a, a little trick that uh, someone showed me many years ago about working with this magnet wire that you wind the toroids with. Now the magnet wire has a uh, coating on it that you have to physically remove. If you just try to heat it with the soldering iron, uh, sometimes it will evaporate and the solder will penetrate, but a lot of times all that happens is you wind up putting solder on the board, but not on the wire. In other words, the wire doesn't, doesn't get wet by the solder, and therefore there's not a real connection. What uh, this fellow, uh, an old-time ham radio operator that had worked with enamel-covered wire since the 30s, uh, showed me is that after you get the... Uh, the wires through. If you use an X-Acto knife or some other sharp-edged instrument and you just scrape the ends of the wire right there where they, where they emerge from the board, what that will do is cause, uh, it will abrade the, uh, the enamel or whatever the covering is and leave a spot of bare copper. And that's really all you need. Uh, you don't need a complete connection all the way around the uh, the wire. You just need to make sure that there is a good electrical connection between uh, a part of the wire and the, the printed circuit board. 
So that's what I've done on this. Now I'm going to solder these up and then I'll put on, uh, oh, also after I have done that I'll use an ohm meter to test to make sure that there is electrical connection on all of these inductors. At that point I will uh, go ahead and install the rest of the uh, components. I've finished installing the components on the, the uh, Gilbert cell board. I thought I might mention a few things in case I haven't mentioned them before about the way I built this circuit. Now as you can see from the top here, I've used sockets for both the uh, 602 and also for the crystal. Now those sockets didn't come with the kit, so what I did is I took a, a regular 8-pin uh, dip socket and put that in here in, uh, so that I can change the uh, 602 or remove it for troubleshooting. And I used a half of a 6-pin dip socket over here with the center pin cut off so it would fit for the crystal. That way I can remove the crystal and insert my own uh, signal, that is my own oscillator signal, instead of using the internal oscillator. A few other things that I noticed about this that turned out to be, uh, well, uh, a mistake on my part, I suppose, is the best way to say it. This coil here mounts differently than the other coils. The other coils, for example, the primary uh, transformer is you mount the primary on one side and the secondary on the other. This coil on the board is actually mounted crisscross. Uh, in other words, the, these two, the hole, the holes for this winding are on two corners of the diagonal and the holes for these for this winding is on the other two uh, instead of there being two holes here and two holes there. What I suggest you do is use an ohm meter and use this jack as your reference. When you have it correctly connected, the uh, one side of the secondary will connect to pin 2. And with the coil removed, there will be no connection from pin 2 to ground. When you insert the coil, there will be a connection from pin 2 to ground through the coil. Of course, it's an inductance. Uh, and then the other two pins are the pins for the primary. So uh, that is one thing. Uh, another thing that I noticed is uh, there are some 330 picofarad or nanofarad capacitors here that are bypass capacitors. In my unit, those were 90 nanofarads. That is, when I had installed all the other capacitors, there were two capacitors left of 90 nanofarads each. So I'm going to try the 90s that came with the kit. Uh, if that doesn't work or I need to put something in parallel to get a little more bypass, primarily what they are doing is they're, they're bypassing the VCC. You notice there's plus 8 volts up here and it just shunts the plus 8 to the RF to ground and then through a 100 ohm resistor and then through another bypass capacitor before it connects to the uh, 602, or in this case it says 612. But as I pointed out at the beginning, the particular kit that I got some years ago still had a 602 in it. I have some 612s and I'll probably try those in there as well. So that is the uh, assembly of the kit. I have soldered everything up and uh, cleaned off the back with uh, uh, isopropyl alcohol and so on. So I'm ready to move on to testing. I finished assembling the uh, Gilbert cell mixer and I have removed the crystal and one of the reasons I used a uh, socket was so that I could use external oscillator uh, inputs instead of depending on the crystal oscillator. The crystal oscillator is fine, but it's a fixed frequency. So if you want to do some measurements over a range and you want to vary the local oscillator, uh, the you'd either have to buy a bunch of different crystals or do this, that is use an external oscillator, which is what I'm doing. Over here I'm applying a 7 megahertz 
uh, signal that I can uh, AM modulate and I'll turn the modulation on and off. And then on the output over here, uh, this is tuned to 5 megahertz. There's a 12 megahertz signal being applied to this point for the local oscillator. So uh, let's take a look on the spectrum analyzer at what, uh, at what that uh, results in. And here you'll see the center frequency is set to uh, 5 megahertz. And at the present time there is no input. That is, there's no 7 megahertz in. There's a 12 megahertz oscillator. So I'll turn on the input and you see we get a 5 megahertz output. Now I'm going to turn off the oscillator for just a moment and you see it disappears. So what a Gilbert cell does is it multiplies the input by the oscillator. The oscillator is back on now. Now what we're going to do is apply a 1 kilohertz AM modulation to the input there and you see the characteristic sidebands that uh, normally result from uh, AM modulation. The 602 that I am using is the older version. The 612 is a newer one. I will point out a couple of books that I have found useful on the 602. We have, uh, if anyone would like to look for them. They've been around a while and they're uh, one of them is RF circuit design uh, by Joseph Carr and a second one is also by Joseph Carr. It's called Joe Carr's Circuit Toolkit. They have some really nice information on the NE602. Uh, the 612 is the newer one and that is the circuit that Kitson Parts is presently shipping, that is the one using the 612. I think that uh, I'm going to have to make this my last YouTube posting, but uh, I do hope that everyone has enjoyed the, the work at least as much as I have enjoyed doing it, and uh, look forward to, uh, to some challenges in the future. So, uh, Instead of my usual have a nice day, I think I'm going to wrap up this final video by saying have a nice many days.